I think today we're going to uh, start in a restorative posture. So if you do have a bolster, then um, please grab it and place it vertically on your mat and have a blanket at the top edge for your head to rest on. If you don't have a bolster, no worries, just you can lie down straight on the floor. And those of you who practice in an Iyengar studio, you can use your props, belt, bricks under your knees, all of that. So Jackie, sit in front of the bolster before you lie back down. Sit about five inches in, yeah, and then lie back down. And then put the blanket under your head. Hold the blanket so your um, head doesn't tilt back, fall back. Um, Debbie, do you have the bolster straight? It should be vertical, supporting your back straight, not... Yes, like that. The blanket at the top. You can start with your legs, um, unless you're already in Sukta Bhada Konasana, with your, the soles of your feet touching. You can also start with your legs straight forward, like in Shavasana. I'm going to be here a little, for a little while, so. First few moments just to come into the environment of your body by using your awareness, scanning the spaces within the physical body and bringing to your awareness any sensations that you may feel. Kind of checking in. Which side is tighter? Around which joints are the muscles or the ligaments, tendons? open or tight. And just like reacquainting, we usually during the day, we've, if your physical body is a person, a human being, let's say, a friend even, maybe, it's likely that you may not have even said hi the whole day to your friend. So let there be some exchange. Even a conversation.
and at least have two places in your body that you can uh, later recall, two areas that could be a little tight. Just remember that for the later, and then suggest for your throat to relax. At this point, um, let's see, you can bring your feet together, join the soles of your feet and allow the knees to go out to the side. <clears throat> Actually, wait here for a little bit. And allow the groins to adjust to this posture. And to relax. Of course, with the change in the position of the legs, you may have some new sensations. And as you stay there longer, allow the body to relax. And now moving to the next layer, the layer of the breath. Begin by just observing your breath as you breathe naturally. Resist the urge to change it in any way. And only observe. And if your breath is another friend, it's probably a friend that you don't see as much as your body because a little more subtle, a little more hidden. So you have to seek this friend out a little bit more to connect with Observe the quality of your breath, the quantity of your breath. And now recall one of those areas where you may have felt a little bit of tightness or maybe you still do. And let's Use the breath to connect the mind and the body. Introduce the two. So inhale into the area that you recall. With your inhalation, energize the area as you exhale. Suggest for the area to relax. Repeat and continue, please. For a few rounds. Yoga is often ref referred to as a union on in its most um, subtle and advanced interpretation it means union of the individual self with the divine consciousness. 
but on a more gross level, it also means union between the different aspects of our own being, body, mind, emotions, intuition, art, also actions, breath, effort in the practice. So bring them together so they work together in service of the higher goal of union of the individual consciousness with divine consciousness. Okay, and then relax the action of your breath, release your legs. You can bring your knees together. If you have a belt, then release the belt. Bring your knees together. Now take your feet apart as wide as your mat with your knees bent. Feet as wide as the mat and allow the knees to drop in towards and let them touch each other. This is a good posture for the sacrum. And place your hands at your lower abdomen, abdominal region. And once again, connecting body and mind with the breath. Use your inhalation to energize the area under your palms, your lower abdomen or abdomen will rise as you inhale, as you exhale. So just for that area to relax. Using the breath here to energize and relax the physical body as well as the inner contents of the physical body. The energy body as well. Relax that action, release your hands, relax your legs, straighten them. There is a concept of progressing in consciousness. You may have heard about, it's a common term in yoga where they say lower self and higher self or the chakras even. Um, the lower self is generally considered to be the more animalistic parts of our being, um, which are part of the lower chakras. They are more about um, survival, um, yeah, main, mainly survival and, you know, everything that's connected with survival. And the higher self is more closer to the more divine aspects of ourself, including the heart qualities as well as, as, well as qualities that are more positive divine, such as love, compassion, many other examples. And we can be anywhere in that spectrum of animalistic, human or divine at any given time. Some aspects may be more developed than others in, in our personalities, but anything can happen at any time. That's how it is. Um, 
But here we look at how can we use the lower self, the, including the animalistic and the human aspects of ourself to serve the more divine aspects of our being. So that means how can we use our bodies and our minds to serve desire of the heart in simplistic terms. In the yoga practice, that, that could also mean how can we use our actions and our intelligence to serve our intention in the practice, and an intention that is grounded in a positive state of desire. And that's where the union also comes in, where we bring everything together in service to something that is part of the higher self. Okay. <clears throat> you can slowly open your eyes, please. And bend your knees, roll over to your side, and make your way to a standing posture. And before applying the actions today, let's actually start with an intention. So bring your hands to Namaste. Lift your sternum up. Take your chin forward, bow your head to your heart. And set an intention for your practice today to remove the obstacles in the physical, mental, and emotional bodies to clear them out and make space for the more positive states, including joy, peace, some bliss. And let's think about doing that in our practice today, at this moment in the yoga practice. Then ask yourself, how can I use my actions? How can I use my intelligence in the practice to serve my intention? Okay. Lift your chin up, release your hands in samastiti. Okay. Now let's apply the actions of Tadasana. Bring, join your big toes and heels slightly apart, unless you can also keep your feet hip distance apart if that articulates better in your hip joint. And spread the surface of your soles on soles of your feet on the floor, bending your knees slightly, press down the big toe mounds and the center of your heels, straighten your legs, activate your thighs, to lift your kneecaps, lift your sternum up, to lengthen the spine, and straighten your arms, elbows, palms facing forward, Drop your shoulder blades down your back. And then if possible, just the big toes and middle toes on the floor, lift the other three toes, middle three toes up. And drop your tailbone slightly forward. So it's in a neutral position. Finally, lift the lowest back rib and your back body up to lengthen your spine.
The actions are here to create more space in your physical body. When there's more space in the physical body, the prana or the life force is able to move more freely, resulting in better, more positive states. Take your hands, relax first, relax your legs. Then take your hands out to the side, palms facing up. Drop your shoulder blades on your back, and energize your arms. And inhale, take your hands above your head, palms facing each other. Relax as you get into it. And now, instead of working the hands, start working from, from the floor up. So work your feet again, activate your thighs, lengthen your sternum, all that we did earlier. Straighten your elbows, spin the triceps in, lift and lengthen the wrists, thumb side especially, tends to be shorter, widen the collarbones. And release your hands in front, interlock your fingers, keep your elbows bent slightly, turn your palms out, and take, um, Debbie, take your hands up a little higher, please. Yeah, not, no, not all the way, yeah. Just in line with your shoulders, yeah. Bend the elbows and take your shoulder blades, shoulders back and drop your shoulder blades down your back, keeping your shoulders there, straighten your elbows, straighten your arms. Straighten your arms. Uh, interlock your fingers and straighten your arms in front, Debbie. Yeah, inhale, hands above your head. Go ahead and relax and then work from the floor up again. And here naturally the front body tend, will tend to lift up more. So a little more effort to lift the back body up, relax the tailbone and lift that lowest back rib up Take your floating ribs, the lowest part of the rib cage in front, take that in, into your spine, into your, yeah, into your spine, and that'll take your navel in as well. And now balance between left and right, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, and wrists. Position as well as the actions. and release your hands. Now interlock your fingers behind your hips. So um, Jackie, straighten your arms and your palms will face up towards your shoulders, other way. Yes, like that, great. Okay. Once again, work from the feet, from the floor. Straighten the body. After you lift your chest, then straighten your elbows. And instead of moving the hands away from your hips, I want you to pull the hands straight down. Let your hands touch your hips and your elbows touch your back, interlock your fingers, don't release the fingers and pull straight down. And release, please. Okay, turn and step to the top of your mat if you're not there already. And let's warm up with a few sun salutations, classical sun salutations. 
Inhale, hands above your head. Exhale, relax your hips and fold. Inhale, keep your hands where they are. Look at the wall in front. Jackie, put your hands on your shins. Yes. Exhale, right leg back, right knee down, hands on the floor. Inhale, hands above your head. Exhale and move to plank position. Inhale and plank. Exhale, knees down, chest down, hips lifted. Inhale, drop your pelvis and navel, lift your head and chest. Exhale, lift your hips back and up to downward dog. Inhale, step your right leg forward, left knee down, hands above your head. Exhale, hands to the floor and sink your hips. Inhale, step your left leg forward, look at the wall in front, keep your hands where they are, don't lift them up. Exhale, relax your hips and fold. Inhale, hands above your head, come up. Exhale, release your hands, samasthiti. Continuing paying attention to the action of your thighs. Inhale, hands above your head, activate your thighs. Exhale, relax your thighs and fold from the hip joint. Release your hands to something. Um, yeah, to your shins, Jackie, don't let them hang. Yeah. Inhale, keep your hands where they are. Look at the wall in front. Exhale, step your right leg back, right knee down. Hands on the floor, relax and open the front of the right thigh. Inhale, hands above your head. Continue to open the front of the right thigh and pelvis. Exhale, move to plank position. Shoulders in line with your wrists and plank. Take your heels back slightly and activate your thighs. Exhale, knees down, chest down, hips lifted. Inhale, drop your pelvis and navel, lift your head and chest. Exhale, lift your hips back and up to downward dog. Activate your thighs and downward dog to open the back of the legs. On your next inhalation, step your right leg forward, left knee down, hands above your head. Relax and open the front of the left thigh. Exhale, hands to the floor. Continue to open the front of the left thigh. Inhale, step your left leg forward, look at the wall in front. Activate your thighs. Exhale, relax your hips, relax your thighs and fold. Inhale, hands above your head, activate your thighs, stabilize your legs. Exhale, release everything. Paying attention to the extension in your spine. Inhale, hands above your head, lengthen your side waist. Exhale, long spine as you fold from the hip joint. Inhale, look at the wall in front to extend your spine. Exhale, right leg back, right knee down, hands on the floor. Keep your hands there, look at the wall in front to lift the sternum, inhale, hands above your head. Energize with your right hand a little bit more. Exhale, move to plank position. Shoulders in line with your wrists, look forward, at least three feet in front. Navel into spine, exhale, knees down, chest down, hips lifted, lift the buttock bones up high to open the low back, inhale, Drop your pelvis and navel, lift your head and chest and look as high as you can. Exhale, take your hips back, look at your hands as you go to downward dog and then release your head. Inhale, step your right leg forward, left knee down, hands above your head, energize a little more with the left hand. Exhale, hands to the floor and look at the wall in front. Inhale, step your left leg forward. Keep your hands there and extend your spine. Don't lift the hands up, keep them down. Exhale, fold. And inhale, hands above your head, come up. Exhale, release your hands. Samastati. 
Okay, we're going to continue. We're going to do two more. Pay attention to the order, please, in this one. Inhale, hands above your head. Exhale and fold. Inhale, extend your spine. Exhale, right leg back, right knee down, hands on the floor. Inhale, hands above your head, come up. Exhale, go to plank position. Inhale and plank. Exhale, knees down, chest down, hips lifted. Inhale, drop your pelvis, lift your head and chest. Exhale, lift your hips back and up. Inhale, step your right leg forward, left knee down, hands above your head. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, step your left leg forward, look at the wall in front. Exhale and fold. Inhale, hands above your head, come up. Exhale, release your hands. Samastiti. This time I'm going to instruct only the breath. Wait for my instruction and then go into the next posture. Um, this is we're going to work the memory a little bit. So um, if you forget, I'll help you. Okay. Inhale. Do the posture. Yeah. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, right leg back, right knee down, hands on the floor. Inhale, continue. Uh, right leg back, Debbie, hands above your head. Exhale, continue. Inhale there, uh, alien plank position. Inhale there. Exhale, continue. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, right leg forward, left knee down, hands above your head. Exhale. Inhale, both legs forward, look at the wall in front. Exhale, inhale, hands above your head. <laughs> Debbie, come up, come standing, it's okay. And release, exhale, release your hands. It's okay, we just try. If you get it, you get it. Don't get it? Try. That's all. It's just a practice. It's not a test. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Okay, before we continue, let's um, just come to a seated posture. Carrot, if you would like to share, please do. So, some water. I'm going to share um, a little bit from a book that uh, was just published that I'm currently reading. It's called Judaism for the World by Rabbi Art Green. And he's talking here um, about um, Avodah Shebalev which uh, can be translated in so many different ways. So I want to give you a little bit of a context for what he's um, talking about. The word avodah, if you are uh, in Israel and um, you want to talk about going to work, it's avodah. <laughs> um, but uh, avodah also um, has the meaning of um, sacrifice. It has the meaning of prayer. It has the meaning of service. Um, 
and also that um, that meaning of work. And Sheba Lev is within, inside of the heart. Lev is heart. So Avodah Sheba Lev is the prayer of the heart, the service within the heart, the work within the heart. It can mean all of those things um, in that one word. So Rabbi Art Green writes, but what does it mean to serve God in our age? One in which the royal metaphor seems so hopelessly outdated. Is that what I want to be a servant before the king? I do not know a God who wants or cares about ritual forms and mumbled words any more than one who wants a great parade of dead animals served up upon the altar. And yet I will not let go of that powerful language precisely because its call on me is so great. Indeed, I know that I am here to serve and that is precisely what I want the power of prayer to call on me to do. Did you hear me? The power of prayer is its power to call on me to demand response from me, to make me shape myself into a vessel for God's service. What is that service? Now, as in all times, it is first and foremost serving God through loving and serving God's creatures. It is not the God of transcendent mystery who needs us. It is the God present in every life form who cries out and says, see me, hear me, know me, help me. Be aware and be present to the infinite faces of the one that exists in all people, each a unique divine image. But in our day, it cries out to me even more loudly to work at protecting this magnificent planet itself, the earthly home of so much richly garbed and varied divine presence. This is the work, the service, the worship to which I need to be devoted. That which will call upon me to proclaim with full-throated joy, Ana Avda de Kudshabrihu, I am the servant of the Blessed Holy One. So those are Rabbi Art Green's words. And this um, evening as we join together and we're hopefully thinking about gratitude and and giving thanks um prayer is a language of giving thanks and expressing gratitude um, and it has that further purpose to um, call upon the self um, as Amit was saying so beautifully earlier to connect with the divine within ourselves and to raise ourselves up to this this um, highest way of being in the world. Um, and I do see that. Um, I know we're not here uh, reciting Hebrew prayers together, um, but I do see what we do uh, in our practice together um, as precisely that. And, um, and I express gratitude for that and for all of you. Thank you, Garrett. Beautiful sharing. You know, when, when you were speaking, I also thought about there are, in yoga, there are different paths that, of yoga. And one of them is that of service, um, service, of course, different levels of service within yourself, but more importantly, when you um, raise your consciousness to a more positive place, then you're of better service to others. So um, otherwise, <laughs> you know what can happen otherwise, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so um, yeah, th it's all about context, you know, and we were talking at the beginning of the class. Um, there's no point if you, you know, you're like the most adept physical yogi and you can do the most incredible things with your, with your body and, you know, um, 
and all of that. But if if there's no um, benefit from your practice to those to those around you, then it's it's in yoga there really isn't a point. Yeah, yeah. In fact, yogis would say that you're not even practicing yoga. You know, it's it's um, immaterial what you can do with your body or what you can achieve if the context is not present. Context of service to to those around you. So we only tune our instruments better so the song is a more beautiful one so when someone else listens to it. <laughs> anyway, okay. So let's continue to tune in <laughs> some more asana practice. Let's uh, come back to standing, please. But it's important, you know, to understand these concepts. So even if, you, if they're not active, some point they may come up the time is right they may come into your consciousness okay so um face the camera please and have your bricks at the back edge of your mat i'm going to go into triangle <clears throat> Step or jump your legs apart, hands apart. And exhale, point the right foot out. I think we, last time we went through it a little bit, so just to recapitulate a little bit, sway the hips back and forth, just so the hips relax to the left and right. Relax them, and then next time they sway back, keep them there, and of course the torso will Lean forward when you do that as your hips go back. And then inhale, extend with your right hand, exhale. Relax the hip joint, keep your legs straight and release the right hand wherever it reaches comfortably. And now looking at the cameras, camera or the screen, relax your hips and take your chest and head back Bring both your hips forward. And we'll do an outer rotation of your right thigh and bring your right hip in line with your right heel. When you do that, the inner edge of the right foot will become heavier on the floor. Keep that as it is and activate your left thigh. Spin the inner groin back and move the front of the left hip back and away from the floor without changing the right leg too much. And then lengthen the right sternum and right hip away from each other. Take the left shoulder back. And take your left hand up. Look at your left thumb. Hold your body with your actions. Here we want the body to open. For the body to open, you have to access the tightness with your actions, but for the body to open, you have to relax there, not tense up. So suggest for any areas that you feel tightness to relax on your exhalation. Use your breath in service to the body and opening the body. Inhale, come up please, strong back leg to come up. Exhale, change the direction of your feet. And take your hands in line with your shoulders. Spray your hips from left to right, back and forth. 
As you do that, especially the front leg and the front hip should relax back as you move it back. Next time you go back, keep your hips there and your spine will lean forward in line with your hips. And then from there, reach with your left hand first and take the left hip back more and then release the left hand very which reaches comfortably. Now, if your intention is to open the body and clear the body from any obstacles, it means you have to apply actions that create more length and more space. And for that, you have to use your intelligence to help you with that. How can I straighten my legs? How can I straighten my spine? Intelligence in the actions. And use your actions and your intelligence to serve your intention of opening and creating more positive spaces in the body. Whatever that means for you. And inhale, come up please. Exhale, bring your legs together, release your hands. Okay, we're going to use, um, let's see, we're gonna go into a forward fold, supported forward fold, um, standing forward fold. Now, if you know your head doesn't reach down too much, then have a, bring a chair and maybe have the chair in front of you because we're going to fold forward uh, with the legs together in Uttanasana. Now, for those of you, if you, you can also place your bricks one on top of the other at the height that is appropriate for you. You can also, of course, you can adjust it later. and standing just slightly behind your bricks with your feet hip distance apart. And inhale, take your hands above your head. So, so Debbie, that's too wide, bring your legs in, just hip distance apart. Bricks are fine. Bricks are okay, your legs. Bring your legs in more little more hip distance. So just under your hips. Yes. Take your hands above your head, look up. Exhale, reach for the wall in front, relax your hip joint and bring your hands down. And first look up, look uh, forward actually, look at the wall in front and lengthen your spine. So don't put your hands on the bricks, put the hands down hands down on the floor. Yeah, on the floor and then lengthen. Look forward, lift your sit bones up. And here, as you lengthen the spine, it'll begin to open the hip joint and the hamstring, sustain the half position for a little bit. So it lengthens the hamstrings in the back of the hips, straighten the legs, maybe activate the thighs even to help you go deeper. And now relax, take your elbows out to the side and bring your fold in your hip joint, bring your head towards the brick. The purpose is not to really put the head on the brick. The purpose is more to lengthen the sternum forward and lift the sit bones up and fold from the hip joint to wherever is available for you and then place the brick to support your head once you're there, rather than thinking about taking your head to the brick. Uh, 
And this is, of course, a supported forward fold, which means that you can't really go in deeper, but wherever you are is probably a challenge enough. But with the bricks there to support you, you can actually stay longer. It becomes a little more passive. And as you stay longer, the muscles will respond and relax and release the tightness. You can assist the process by suggesting with your mind to relax. This posture, of course, is also very good for the brain and the mind to relax. So here we're using the body and the posture in service to the mind, to relax the mind, relax your breath, observe your breath. Try to take deeper inhalations and exhalations. And inhale, come to the half position. Exhale, hands on your hips. Inhale, come up, exhale. Release your hands, your legs. Okay, let's go into downward dog. Um, if you could use the edge of the wall, edge of the wall and floor, <clears throat> and place your thumb and index finger like this against the wall. So it's like that. This will be away, and this thumb and the index finger will touch the wall. Have a brick close to you, please. So once you get up, you can place your head on the brick. But again, it's not about bringing your head to the brick. Go to the posture, go to the downward dog, thumb and index finger touching. Place the brick um, where your head would, um, head would release. Yeah, and then go into the posture first. So don't put your head on the brick yet. Look forward, instead look forward at the wall and you have the support of the wall here and the floor to help you to articulate your, in your hands a little more effectively. So use that action and the support of the wall and floor to help you to widen the collarbones, do an outer rotation of your upper arms, take your shoulder blades down your back and move the energy up your spine then lift your sit bones up. And then also into your legs, activate your thighs, spin your inner groins back and try to bring the outer heels down to the floor. In fact, lift everyone, lift your big toes up and pressing down on the big toe mound, take the energy across the top of your feet and to the outer edge of your heels and drop the outer heels down. Now release your head without releasing the actions. So here the actions are holding your body up and your brain is soft because it's relaxing 
on the brick. Yeah, if you need to come out, come down and come go up again, you're welcome to do that. And while you're there, see, notice the feeling of how it is when the body is active, but the brain is quiet. It's a very different feeling. It's a unique feeling. Observe that and enjoy that for a few moments. And release, please come down. You can come back to your mat and sit in Dandasana with your legs straight forward. If your hamstrings are tight, then please sit on some elevation, either a folded blanket or anything that you have at home. The other thing in, uh, in yoga is that by virtue of being born in a physical body, of the soul being housed in a physical body, we have to tend to the physical body. In fact, we have to tend to the physical body in such a way and keep it pure and uncluttered, it's like a temple, right? It's like a sacred space. If it's clear and uncluttered and the light and air is moving freely in, then there's a certain quality of um, lightness and ease and that, that, that accompanies that. So, uh, We cannot ignore the reality that the physical body plays in the aspect of the expression of the soul. So we have to tend to it with love and care, clean it, air it out, you know, so the energy is nice and flowing freely. Otherwise, it begins to disturb the mind. The body will disturb the mind. If the mind is disturbed by the body, the mind will disturb the heart. So that's the thing. The, the, that's why as we purify the body, the mind, and clear all the clutter that's in there. Once we do that, the only thing that remains is that pure positive state of the heart. And much of the work in yoga is just that, is removing and cleaning up and getting rid of clutter and all of those things to create a more positive state and easy state so the, so the heart expresses itself. So in, in, in that sense, Again, the body and the mind have to be in service to the heart and the soul. Okay. So let's come into Dandasana with your hands next to your hips. Bring your feet, um, big toes touching. Heels can be slightly out. And first lift your sternum up, lengthen the spine. Look into your big toes and take your shoulders back, drop your shoulder blades down and keeping the spine long, then use the support of your wrists and hands to keep it, keep the spine up and long. Flex your feet, activate your thighs and take the back of the knees and the back of the inner groins towards the floor. 
There'll be a slight internal rotation of your upper legs in the hip socket, and that will help to open the sacrum, which in turn is good for your low back. And then with the sternum lifting, and the legs doing the work, just hold your body with the actions. And interlock your fingers in front, elbows slightly bent, arms facing out, Debbie. Take your shoulders back and down, straighten your arms and take your hands above your head. And here, of course, you don't have the support of the arms on the floor, but you have the action pulling up to help you lengthen the spine. And the legs have to work a little bit more here with the hands above your head. So activate the thighs, spin the inner grinds down towards the floor, flex the feet and point the big toes out. Sorry, big toe mounds out, away from you. Toes towards you, big toe mounds away from you. And release, please. Let's come into Virasana. Knees together, feet apart. You can sit on a brick or if you're more open on the blank blanket or the floor. You can do it on your own. Some postures I don't instruct too much because I want you to find your own expression in it. But stay up first. So just stay, yeah, perpendicular. This is a, it's a continuation. It's a variation of the previous posture. So what did you do in the previous posture? How can you Bring that into this posture. Again, think about the intention of your practice to remove the obstacles, the tightness, the contraction in the body, and to create more space, more length, so there's more room for the energy to move around. With that intention, it's just your actions, it's just your intelligence to that. One thing that may happen is your mind may get distracted when you practice on your own. Gently bring it back to the practice. You've done this posture many times. How else can you do it to create more space? Use your hands to help you lengthen the spine more. What are the, what are the arm variations that help you lengthen the spine? Take your hands forward and straighten your arms, take your hands above your head. Now interlock your fingers, try to keep your hips where they are and fold forward, keep your hands as they are, fold forward, but without your hips lifting up. Take your hands down and try to fold as much as you can. 
Take your hands forward to help you lengthen the spine, open the hip joint and bring your torso lower without lifting your hips up. Okay, and inhale. Come up, please. Exhale, release your legs. Sit in Dandasana again. Let's go to Janu Sarasana. Bend your right knee. Place the right foot against the left inner thigh. Right knee out to the side. Place your hands on either side of your extended leg. Flex your left foot. Lift your sternum up as you did in Dandasana. Turn the navel slightly to your left. And clasp your right wrist with your left hand. Straighten your arms and take your hands above your head. Turn your navel to your left and flex the left foot. Look at the big toe. Inhale, look up. Pull the right wrist with your left hand and keep the spine long. Exhale, fold from the hip joint and release your hands to wherever they reach comfortably. Hold on to something, whether it's your shin bone or your toes or your foot, whatever it is. Try to have a strong grip there. And then look at your big toe. Inhale and lengthen the sternum forward and take your chest like you're taking the chest back but without your hands moving. So lengthen the spine. And then lengthen the left leg. Inhale, lengthen from the left sternum. Exhale, relax the hip joint and fold if you're folding or move slightly forward. If you're not able to hold your foot, then your work is not so much folding, but moving forward more. Yeah, with your breath. On the inhale, lengthen the spine. On the exhale, those of you who have a firmer grip, relax the hip joint and fold. Elbows go out to the side. Continue to look at the big toe. And inhale, come up please. Exhale and release. release your leg, make your way to the other side. Hands next to on either side of your right leg. Look at your right big toe, flex the foot, activate the thigh, lift your sternum up like in Dandasana. Take the navel to the right, and then clasp the left wrist with your right hand, straighten your arms, take your hands above your head, and turn the navel to the right again. Inhale, look up, pull the left wrist with the right hand, lengthen the spine, fold from the hip joint, relax as you go into it, and Hold wherever is comfortable. Once you hold, then look at the right big toe and lengthen the sternum towards the chin. Lift the chest. Lift it up to open the hip joint. Straighten the right leg. Stay in the half position or if you're folding, inhale, lengthen the spine forward. Exhale, relax your hips. Elbows go out to the side and bring your abdomen towards your thigh. Continue to do that, maybe for a couple more breaths. Three or four breaths more and then just hold the body there. I said it in my other class, but most of you weren't there of course, but if you want to open the hip joint, lengthen the sternum. If you want to open the hamstrings, lengthen the sternum in your postures. Simple action, if you can just remember that, that will help to open the hip joint, 
which is one of the main purposes of the physical practice of yoga. And inhale, come up, please. Exhale, release your leg. Inhale, bend both your knees, bring your heels towards your hips in Baddha Konasana, soles of your feet together and pull your heels in towards your pelvis. Place your hands next to your hips and pushing down on, your, on the floor, lift your hips up slightly and take your hips forward towards your heels. Yeah, so get a tight fit as much as is available for you comfortably. Um, Debbie, sit on a bolster, please. If your knees are high up, much higher than your hips, then sit on some elevation. So I think, Laurie, you too, better sit on something. Okay. Jackie, I'm not sure whether your the soles of your feet are, are they? Yeah, they are, right? Okay. Okay, you may not need to sit so high because your knees are quite low. Yeah. Okay, and place your hands next to your hips on the floor like you do in Dandasana with your fingers pointed forward. Now here again, we're opening the hip joint. <laughs> so what do we do for that? Lift the sternum, push down on your wrists and lift your sternum up, lift it up. Look down, lift the sternum towards the chin. Yeah. Look down slightly, not too much. And then on the inhalation, lift the sternum up. On the exhale, press the center of your heels against each other, the outer edges of your feet, and move your big toes and big toe mounds away from each other. Do that for five breaths. And as you do that, lengthen the sternum to open the hip joint. Exhale. Press your feet and take your knees down to open the grinds. Keep going in deeper like that. Don't release it, just keep going higher and with higher with your spine on the inhale, lower with your knees on the exhale. Five breaths. To open the obstacles from the body is not an easy task. It requires effort, it requires action. Eventually, of course, your, the sides of your knees will be on the floor. And that's when you know that your groins have opened fully. Till then, we just try till there. Okay, and release, please. Release your legs. Go into child's pose. Take your hands forward in child's pose. And keep your hands a little active like you would in downward dog. So the elbows are off the floor, the arms are straight, and the inner edges of your palms are grounded, outer rotation of the upper arms, and there's an energetic action, physical and energetic action of moving the hips towards the heels. There's a lengthening in the spine, an opening in the hip joint, And inhale, come to tabletop. Exhale and go to downward dog from there. And inhale, step or jump your legs through. Come to a seated posture in Dandasana. And let's go through Dandasana again. We're going to go into a forward fold. Paschimottanasana, so interlock your, actually hands next to your hips first, lengthen your spine, flex your feet briefly, and then interlock your fingers in front, straighten your arms, take your hands above your head. 
Look at your big toes. And these simple preps, the postures before, are so important. That's where most of the work happens. So spending just a few breaths there, and then inhale, look up, lengthen the spine, exhale, keep your hands in line with your ears and fold from the hip joint, bring the torso down. Once the torso goes down as much as is available, then release your hands away from your ears and hold wherever is comfortable. And lengthen the sternum forward. As you lengthen, those of you who still don't have your feet, you, as you lengthen the sternum, you can walk your hands forward more towards your feet. Create more length in the sternum. That'll open the hip joint. It'll give you more room for your hands to move forward. Those of you who already have a clasp, lengthen and then exhale and fold from the hip joint. Bring your abdomen towards your eyes. Keep looking at your big toes. When you look at the big toes, the sternum lengthens. When the sternum lengthens, the hip joint is opening. It does not collapse. It keeps opening, which, which is what helps you to bring the abdomen closer to the thighs. To go down, go forward. To go down, go forward. Of course, you know, you just do as much as is available today at this moment. You can't get everything right now. Do what's available and then some, a little more. And inhale, come up, please. Exhale, release. You can just um, come to a cross leg position. I think carry it. There's a little more you can like to share. I'm going to take a little bit from the um, Torah portion that we're actually just leaving behind for uh, this weekend. But it's this magnificent um, section from Genesis where Jacob has a dream. And uh, the text says, Jacob had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to the heavens and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And, uh, and later we hear that Jacob awakened from his sleep and proclaimed truly the Holy One is in this place and I, I did not know it. Um, and, um, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of an inside joke here. <laughs> because if we're paying attention earlier, we know that Jacob came to this exact place um, because his ancestors had been there and had let him know that this was a holy place. So, him saying he didn't know it is a little bit sus, as my kids would say. <laughs> it's a little bit suspect um, because he has every reason to know that this is, in fact, a holy place. Um, and it's just only through his dream that he comes to what, um, what I would call an abiding knowledge versus a transient knowledge. There are things that we are aware of when we think about them and um, intellectually we know that they are so, um, but we don't um, feel them. We, we don't experience them. We, we don't uh, transform them into a knowledge that abides with us and is present in our everyday experience. When we sit back and we actually think about it, we say, oh, yes, I know that, but it's not with us all the time. So I would 
offer that the reason that we uh, study as Jews, the reason that we engage in mitzvot, um, which is another way of saying in, in the practice, um, and the reason that we're here doing what we do is to help ourselves integrate these teachings um, into the body, into ourselves, into the body, mind, spirit, until they really truly become a part of us. And as we've seen um, with uh, the yoga practice and as we see, I think, in, in our lives, um, integrating all of this takes commitment. It takes discipline and it takes ongoing practice. So um, as we move through this uh, Thanksgiving week, this Thanksgiving weekend, um, we can think about uh, how do we how do we want to continue to make these things that we know um, less transient and more abiding for ourselves because very few of us are going to have an experience like Jacob where um, there's a moment of insp divine inspiration. Um, I think uh, Art Green said it beautifully before um, from, the, from the book Judaism for the World, which I shared with you, is that um, prayer and this practice is really there to um, inspire ourselves so we can hear the voice within ourselves calling us to do. And so we are inspired, further inspired to do when we truly know. And then that is reinforced by the doing, by the practice. So may we all uh, find that inspiration. I, w I wish I could say um, that, you know, I was like Jacob. Um, I'm not. I need to show up here and be present um, and be committed. Um, so I, uh, I hope we all continue to do so. Let's just go into a brief uh, the Konasana. Thanks for that, Kareth, again. Um, we're almost out of time, so just a brief one, the same posture we be began with, which is lying down on the bolster with your feet together, soles of your feet together, blanket for your head. Once again, the simple practice that we did in the beginning of class of checking in with the body, reconnecting with the space of the body and reconnecting with the space of your breath. Just another reminder, just do the practice briefly so you reconnect with that. And of course it changes the sensation in the beginning of the class and now will probably be different even though the practice is the same. And then how can you keep that practice with you? With you, not just here in, the, in yoga, but even when you go in, into your lives. How can you keep the practice of just being in connection, in touch with your body, in, with your breath, even if it's for a short time? So the practice is with you and stays with you through other times in your life as well. So yoga is not just when you're on the mat, it becomes a practice that is always present. Okay.
next week so uh hope to see you back in the same um same space welcome bianca um <laughs> and thanks everyone so lovely to be with you thank it's you fun. it was beautiful both thank amid you. and you thank you so much be back next thank week. you thank you thanks everyone good to see you good to see, see you. you next time <laughs>